what's up guys, it's Eli Knight with Knight Jiu Jitsu and with Aperture. I'm here with my brother Jared Jessup at IQ Jiu Jitsu in Benton, Illinois. And we were just doing some training today and doing some rolling and we came across a couple things and I thought we'd make a cool video about compression locks. And we've got some of our favorites that we're gonna show you. Um, so these are like slicers, compression locks, sandwich type moves. And so let's just kind of jump into it. Yeah. Um, one of the first ones that I ever learned ever was from whenever I'm trying to finish an arm lock and I can't finish it. So like if, if we're here and however I got into this position, like I'll wind up kind of traditional arm lock and I've got the arm through and it can be either way, but uh, typically I like to have this one up north like planted on the floor. Um, and he's somehow he's resisting and sometimes this is the result of him coming here and rescuing his arm and trying to bring it back. Um, but either way, I get kind of the narrow part of my forearm or down by the wrist here like this and then I'm going to stack my legs over the connection that he's making here. Uh, now you can do this sometimes just by crossing and sometimes this will, will put enough pressure to pop it free. But if you want though, you can uh, not allow him to pull it free and actually go for the compression lock here where I scoop this up and yeah, it's really uncomfortable. So my wrist is peeled in here and I'm squeezing like a triangle and I'm hooking my bottom leg underneath his body like this. And it's really pretty miserable on Jared right now. Notice even though I've already let go, my arm is still stuck. Yeah, I kind of didn't want him to let go. So like from here, it's stuck. And now all I have to really do there is squeeze. But the, uh, a key detail here is it's on the flat. This is in the compression right now. And whenever I rotate that up, that makes even more space. That can be do something as bad as uh, possibly even break the radius or ulna. And it can separate the elbow sometimes. Um, so it can be pretty nasty, right? You can also do it north too, right? You can go here. And um, same kind of thing, if I'm this way, maybe I can do the configuration this way and hook it under his head, and that's pretty nasty too. And I'm actually trying to be light on this because it's, it's really <laughs> bad really fast. But if I hook here and then I lean down this direction, I can even hook the leg so that he can't scramble and try to get free. Then when I rotate that wrist, it makes a lot of pressure. It's really nasty, it's really painful. Um, so that's one of the compressions that I like a lot. Let's check out one from uh, Neon Belly. So he's, uh, Eli's on his back here. <coughs> So I've um, got my knee across, and maybe his, his knee's kind of shooting up and through right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna step back and shoot through deep right here. I want the blade of the wrist right in the, uh, right in the bend of the knee. Now, I'm gonna sit my butt right on his toes. And as I sit down, I'll come through and grab my shin. Boom, I wanna bring, I wanna bring my bottom right back to his butt. And now that I've got this good and connected, I can come over and cross. From here, I make the grip, and I'm gonna turn the blade again and pull up and through, right? Got a compression lock right here on the knee. Yeah. So, and that triangle that he has wrapped around here, and he's always pulling it in tight, man, it's miserable with that pressure built up. Makes it unfun for sure. So, boom, boom, as you sit back, that shin, good to go, right here. Okay. Good. Yeah. So, that same kind of uh, compression like that, sometimes you can do it from, uh, if he's standing, You'll see this opportunity pop up sometimes whenever, like I like to play shin to shin like this when the person is standing here, maybe uh, before I start to sit into this kind of seated guard. But what will happen if I'm like this, he'll try to pummel the foot inside in uh, expectation to get like a knee cut pass on me here. So if I have that, that kind of awareness and I have that built up, whenever he steps inside here, then I'm gonna shoot through like this and I'm gonna fall back. Same thing that Jared was saying, I'm gonna grab my shin, pull it down, figure four my legs here and squeeze. And that's a lot of pressure on the knee, it's a lot of pressure on the hamstring, a lot of pressure on the calf. So it's compressing a lot of stuff there. Not a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, what else? From the uh, from side control, right? So sometimes the guy, like maybe I might have the leg up right here and he might drape over the leg right here. I might be thinking that I'm gonna go for a toe hold or something. So I'm kind of trying to save his, uh, the fact that he did that. One of the keys is that the hand is close to the belly right here, right? And the closer his hand comes through, then the more likely I am to be able to catch this. So look, I'm gonna drop the knee out slightly right here and that makes a little space for my hand to shoot through. And I'm gonna shoot both hands through at the same time and just cup right behind his tricep. Now my leg comes out around and hangs on uh, like a triangle grip right here. I'm gonna take both my knees away from my head and pull his shoulder to my belly button. Boom, and it's a super, super tight lock. Again, this will break the race and all that or it'll separate the elbow depending on where you have the placement of the shin. Uh, an instinct sometimes for people is whenever they get caught in that is to try to like rip their arm free of it and that's, that's a mistake. It does like, not work. We've got a good friend that actually broke his own like yeah. uh, uh, his owner, his radius, one of yeah. them. He actually broke it trying to get free. It's just pow. It's really nasty. Yeah. So um, 
Well, another one that's, that's really been popular um, over the years, uh, and you've seen some really pretty examples of this in competition and stuff. Let's go from triangle, or like triangle set up from a guard. Um, because a lot of times here, if I'm starting to set up a triangle, and I get like this here, and so I start making this connection, and Jared's worried because I've got his neck and his arm inside here, so those are the elements I need to really finish this triangle. So what guys will do out of desperation sometimes when you're setting this up, is they'll start to pull this inside. Now if you, if you manage here to keep the elbow accessible like this, then I shoot through like this here and I hold. Now he's kind of giving me the setup for it. So from here, um, if I bring this to the other side of his head, so I kind of let this go, which he doesn't really protest too much because he feels like he's getting around the outside of the guard that he can pass now. But from here now, if I figure four this way, right, then I can really start to set up a lot of compression that way here. Or um, just to prevent the guard pass here, like this will get the compression done, but to prevent the guard pass, I want to kind of get heavy on his head, turn the angle this way here instead, like that. Now, even if he rolls, he twists, he does whatever, it's still gonna be bad. I still got the compression set in, and it's it's really painful on the bicep and on the forearm. So, um, you know, that be, like I said, these things are painful, and you can't always depend on painful uh, things to end it. A lot of times guys will tap from pain, but the, the pain has to be, like, has to have an element behind it of letting the guy know that there's damage to be inflicted. So if these weren't actually damaging things and they were just painful for painful sake, they wouldn't be very good techniques. You know? But these are pretty solid, they can do a lot of damage. And yeah. Something good to shoot for to add into your training sometimes. Yeah. I'd be interested if anybody has any other examples and they could like leave me like a link of a good example in a competition or somebody demonstrating it or something. Leave the link down in the comments. I'm always anxious to check out things or check out better examples of these kind of same elements. So, uh, you know, let me know what you guys got, and thank you for watching Night Jiu Jitsu. Check out Jared at iqjujitsu.com, IQ Jiu Jitsu on all the social media, right? All right, thanks a lot, guys. Now,